right welcome to advanced management accounting today's lesson is investment appraisal so let's look at the content of this lesson so this investment appraisal is also known as the capital budgeting so under this lesson we are going to learn the objectives of the investment appraisal investment appraisal process what is time value of money? Then the investment appraisal techniques. Now let's look at the objectives of investment appraisal. So investment appraisal is a process of analyzing whether an investment project is worthwhile or not. So here, following objectives we can see. First one is maximizing shareholders' wealth because most of the public companies are doing this investment appraisal. They are liable to increase the shareholders' wealth. So one of the objective or the core objective of investment appraisal is maximizing shareholders' wealth. The next one is improving profitability. So by doing the investment appraisal, by adding value to the company, they can improve the profit then this will be able to assess the liquidity. Through the payback period, they can check whether the liquid conditions can be satisfied. The fourth one is minimize the risk. If we select the correct project at the right time, we would be able to minimize the risk. These are the objectives of investment appraisal. And here, let's look at the investment appraisal techniques. So in the investment appraisal process, first we are going to identify the investment opportunities. So these investment opportunities can be identified through by analyzing the business environment. You know, we can use pestle analysis for that. Then we can analyze the internal environment by doing the SOT analysis. There are gap analysis as well. So you can learn these under the strategic management. Then we are going to see what are the research and development prospects of the company and what are the legal constraints and the requirement. Through that, we can identify the investment opportunities. Then the next step is <clears throat> We are going to screen the investment proposals. In the screening, what we are going to do is we are going to identify what is best strategic fit. And the most appropriate use of economic resources. So you know that the resources are scarce. Therefore, we have to find the best strategic fit which match the organization's economic resources without facing any constraint or limiting factors. The next one is we are going to analyze and evaluate the investment proposals to analyze and evaluate the investment proposals, we can use investment appraisal techniques. Then the fourth step is approving investment proposals. We know that every organization have a hierarchy. So sometimes divisional heads should approve the investment proposals. Ultimately, the end decision making power is lies with the board of directors. So the board of directors should approve the investment proposals at the end of the organizational decision making process. Finally, what we are going to do is we are going to implement the project, depend on the time constraint. Then we are going to monitor the project, depend on the complexity. Then we are going to review the investment so we can see what are the future forthcoming events and foresee them as early as possible and make the right decision in future. 
Then let's look at the concept of time value of money. Actually, this time value of money is a financial principle that recognizes the fact that money paid out or received is now worth more than that is expectation in the same amount at some future date, which means a rupee worth today, how much it is worth in future. This is due to following conditions. We know that there may be several investment opportunities. So money received now could be invested and we can grow it larger sum in the future. There may be cost of finance. If we have a loan, then money received sooner could be used to repay it than save the interest portion. Inflation. We know that inflation erodes the purchasing power of money, right? So purchasing power of money, you have learned in economics. So what is and how much we can buy worth of one rupee or rupees 100 now? And how much we can buy in five years later? So you know that in Sri Lanka, there is high inflation. This is known as hyperinflation. So in a hyperinflation situation, the money worth today is worth more than what is in future. Then the risk. So we know that due to the uncertainty, it is unpredictable to predict the future cash flows. Therefore, there is a high risk involved in the future cash flows. Because of these situations, it's really worthwhile to evaluate the projects in different investment techniques. Right? Therefore, these implications are very significant and very relevant for long-term projects. Now let's look at the investment appraisal techniques. There are three different tools in a business can use to assess merits of different investments. The first one is non-discounted cash flow techniques. So here you can see the first one as payback period. And the second one as average rate of return. Then we can move on to the discounted cash flow techniques. Here we can see discounted payback period, then net present value. So here the first part or the non-discounted techniques ignores the time value of money. And the discounted cash flow techniques involves the time value of money. Therefore, these two Techniques are recognized separately. Now you can see in this diagram what are the basis for making the investment decisions when it involves the capital expenditure. So if you are going to evaluate for financial accounting techniques, we can use accounting rate of return. But if we are going to evaluate this based on the cash flow reasons, then we have to use the payback period, which means if we are going to evaluate the liquidity, then we have to use the payback period. So if we are going to make an investment that will provide an adequate investment return over a period of time, then we have to use the discounted cash flow techniques. So if a company is going to create additional value for the business, then they have to use the net present value. And if they are focusing on making a good investment decision in return, then they have to use the internal rate of return. 
Now you can see, based on the different investment decisions, the decision appraisal tools are different. Now let's look at the payback period. Payback period is the amount of time that it takes to recover the cash outlay of the investment. So here the decision rule is if the payback period is less than the cutoff payback point, then we have to accept the project. If the given payback period is greater than the cutoff payback point, we have to reject it. Which means if a company have given a payback period, if the calculated payback period is lesser than that, we have to accept it. If the calculated payback is greater than that, we have to reject it. Now let's look at this example. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to calculate the net cash flow for each option. So, in the first one, let's calculate the option one net cash flow according to the period. So, in the first year, the net cash flow is 10,000. How we can arrive? From the initial outlay, we are going to add back the net income. Since it is an income, we have to add it back. Then, since the initial outlay is greater than the net income, we are getting a negative net cash flow, which is 10,000. So, in the year 2, if we reduce this 10,000 from the net income 10,000, we are getting a zero balance for the net year. Which means in the year two, we are going to pay back the full initial capital outlay. According to that, in the option two, the payback period is two. Now let's look at the option two. In the option two, we have an initial outlay of 40,000. You can see it from 40,000 with brackets. Now let's calculate the net income in the year one. So the net income in the year one is 40,000 negative plus a positive 10,000. So you are getting a negative 30,000. Now let's calculate the net income in year two. So from this negative 30,000, we have to add a positive net income of 20,000. So at the end of year two, the net cash flow will be 10,000. You can see even in the second year, option two is not going to pay back there is some left over. So we have to calculate the payback period in the year three as well. So we have to pay another 10,000 of the capital outlay. But in the third year, we have 20,000, which is greater than this amount, which means the payback period will become in between the year three. So we have to use some arithmetical method or a formula to calculate the break even point or the payback period of this project. So 
we have to use this formula which is in red color. We have to put the amount required in the numerator and in the denominator we have to use the amount received and we have to multiply it with 12. Now just see whether you have obtained two years and six months as the payback period for option two. Now let's look at the advantages and disadvantages of the payback period. So let's look at the advantages first. Payback period is simple to calculate as well as it's easy to understand. And it gives preference to the liquidity. And it is useful to measure the risk of recoverability. And let's look at the disadvantages. It's only considered the cash flows until the initial investment is recovered. And it's failed to consider the cash flows that comes in subsequent years. Therefore, the overall profitability of the project is not considered. Overall profitability means the cash inflows and outflows over the end of the period. So they are not going to focus about the overall profitability. They are just focusing on the recoverability. And it ignores the time value of money. Now let's see the average rate of return. This is also known as ARR. This is more meaningful and complex method of investment appraisal. It works out as a percentage of return for each investment and it is much more useful for comparison to tools such as ROC. That's why this is used for financial ratio analysis. There are four simple steps to follow to calculate the average rate of return. First, we have to work out the total return of the project. Then, we have to subtract the cost of the project. This gives the net return. Then we have to divide the number of years. So this gives the net return per annum. In other words, it will give the average return per year. Finally, we have to divide the net return per annum by the cost of the project, which means average return should be divided by the initial investment or the initial capital outlay. And then we have to multiply it by 100 because we have to obtain a percentage as a result. Now, this is the formula we are going to use to calculate the average rate of return. We are going to divide the average net profit or the net return from the average investment. And then we are going to multiply it with 100. So here, the decision rule is we have to select the projects with the highest average rate of return. Or if we have given a target ARR, then the project should be above that. Now let's calculate the average rate of return for the following project. Now 
Now let's calculate the average rate of return. So here, the first step is we have to add up all the cash flows. That is pound 450,000. Then in the step two, we have to deduct the outlay, which means 350,000. Then what we are going to do under step three is we are going to divide it by the number of years. So we are getting 70,000 as the average return. Now let's calculate the average rate of return. So here what we are going to do is we are going to divide the average return by the initial capital outlay. And then we are going to multiply it with 100. So we are going to get ARR as 70%. Now let's look at what are the advantages and disadvantages. So here, as advantages, we can see it uses all the cash flow over the project's life. Earlier in the payback period, if we recover the cash flow, we have ignored the rest of the cash flows. However, here we are taking into the consideration of the overall project's cash flows. Then it's focus on the profitability, unlike the payback period payback period, they have focused on the liquidity and they have ignored the profitability. But in the average rate of return, they are going to focus on the profitability. And it's easy to compare. Comparison between the projects is really easy. Why? Because it's give a percentage. We have to select the project with the highest ARR which means it's easy. Then let's look at the disadvantages. It ignores the timing of the cash flows, which means it ignores the time value of money. And as later years included, it could be argued to be less accurate than the payback, which means we are focusing on the overall project. So in the later years, sometimes the cash flow may be changed. Therefore, the accuracy may be questionable. Then it's only a forecast. We know that in the unpredictable, uncertain environment, the forecast can be manipulated or changed. Now let's look at the net present value. This method of investment appraisal take into consideration the time value of the project to see whether it is worthwhile to undertake a project or not. Net present value calculate the present value of all the money coming into the business. It use the cost of capital to discount the cash flows. The value of the inflows over the current outflows decide whether the project is accepted or rejected. If NPV is zero or greater than that, we have to accept the project. If NPV is less than zero, which means a negative value, then we have to reject the project. Simply, if the NPV value is positive, we have to accept it. If the NPV value is negative, we have to reject it. If the NPV is zero, we know as it's a break-even project. Now let's calculate the net present value of this project based on the cost of capital of 10%.
So when we multiply the cash flows with the discount rate, you can see the present value of the cash flows. Now to obtain the net cash flow, what we are going to do is, to obtain the net present value, what we are going to do is, we are going to deduct the initial outlay. So you can see, right? The total cash flows, which means the present value of the cash flows are pound 37,900. So when we deduct the initial outlay, the negative return on the project is pound 2,100. Since it's given negative net present value, we are saying the project would be rejected, which means we have to reject the project because it would not generate a positive shareholders' wealth. In other words, it will generate a negative wealth. Now let's see what are the advantages and disadvantages of the net present value. As advantages, we can see it consider the time value of money. That's why we have discounted the cash flows. Then it take into the consideration of all years and therefore we can see the profitability of the project. As disadvantages, of the net present value, we can see it is complex to calculate. Even though the discount factors are given in the exam, it is little bit complex when it involves inflation, working capital changes, as well as taxes. And it can be quite negative as most of the projects end up being rejected. So most of the projects at the end of the year, there may be huge capital outlay because they have to dismantle the project. In that scenario, we can see that most of the projects will end up being rejected. And it's only a forecast. You know that forecast can be unpredictable due to the uncertainty. And the interest rate used to calculate this NPV can be unrealistic. So as example, if we are using 10% rate, actually sometimes it may not reflect the true cost of capital. Therefore, the ultimate decision would be vague with the reality. Now, let's see a superior method which is known as the internal rate of return. Internal rate of return is the discount rate at which the NPV of the project becomes zero when discounted. It tells you how much return a project could generate to compensate for its investment. The positive NPV implies the internal rate of return is greater than the discount rate, which means the cost of capital. In other words, the return is higher than the cost. Therefore, what we are going to do in this scenario is we are going to accept the project. Negative NPV implies that IRR is less than the discount rate, which means the return is less than the cost. In this scenario, we have to reject the project. And zero NPV implies that IRR equal to the discount rate, which means 
return is equals to the cost of capital. Now let's see what are the advantages and disadvantages of internal rate of return. So as advantages, it consider the time value of money and it is simple to interpret and there is no requirement of handling a hurdle rate. And it is making a rough estimate of required rate of return whether to accept this project or to reject this project. However, the internal rate of return ignores the economies of scale. And it is based on certain assumptions, which is impracticable. Depend or contingent projects are ignored in internal rate of return. And at the same time, it excludes the mutually exclusive projects. And different terms or conditions of the project is not considered in the internal rate of return calculation. So, here, at least try to remember three or four disadvantages with regard to internal rate of return. Now let's look at the other investment appraisal techniques which consider the time value of money as well as it is a discounted cash flow technique. Let's look at the profitability index. Profitability index is a measure of the attractiveness of a project or investment. Profitability index can be calculated by taking the present value of future cash flows and dividing it with the initial investment. If the PI or the profitability index value is greater than one, then we are going to accept the project. If profitability index equals to one, we know as it is the break-even point. And if the profitability index less than one, we can either reject the project or we have to proceed or we have to start the project with more careful considerations. That's why it's mentioned proceed with caution. Sometimes the project may not generate sufficient return to justify the investment. However, some qualitative factors may indicate that we should proceed with the project. Now let's see the advantages of the profitability index. Profitability index tells about an investment increasing or decreasing the firm value. And it takes into consideration all the cash flows. And it considers the time value of money as well. And profitability index also helpful in ranking and picking up the projects while rationing of capital. And there are some disadvantages as well. It ignores the sunk cost, the cost which we have already incurred. And there may be difficulty in determining the rate of return. And this profitability index is optimistic projection. We always predict for the best. And it ignores the opportunity cost or the value of the next best investment for gold. Now, let's see what is superior, 
whether it's NPV or the PI. NPV and PI are the techniques of capital investment and closely related to each other. Both provide the same result as far as accept and reject decisions are concerned. Under NPV, the proposal is accepted if it gives a positive net present value. Under PI, a proposal is accepted if the PI is greater than 1. However, in the case of mutually exclusive proposals, mutually exclusive means we can select just one proposal out of two. So in the case of mutually exclusive proposals, with different scale of investment, different capital amounts, then the initial investment in the alternative proposal is not the same conflict in the in PV and PI ranking. So these two options may give two different results if the initial capital outlay is different. 